All right. I am going to draw, don't draw big. <coughs> Start pretty small because you're going to need four different ones. Okay? Second period ran out of space because they drew too big. If you started school, we're going to talk about fish because they're easy to draw. When you started school and you were a tiny tadpole in kindergarten and your teacher said, count those pens. How would you count those? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'd go one, two, three, four, five. If you had those little plastic teddy bear things, and they'd put them out, and you'd count one, two, and you'd put like in groups, and you'd have ten, and you'd work with everybody would have ten, and then you put ten, five. So we counted. We counted one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and so on. We were little. That's how we counted. When your teacher lines you up at the door to go to the lunch, you'd say one, two, three, four, five. We were counting. It's what comes naturally. Counting one, two, three, four is what comes naturally. You could also call it counting. Depends on who you talk to. We count naturally. One, two, three, four. Then when you got a little bit bigger, your teacher may have said, well, what if you don't have any pens on your desk? Then what is that? Zero. So at some point, somebody had to teach you about zero because the idea of zero does not come naturally. So when you learned zero, one, two, three, and so on, those are whole numbers. You were just a little bit bigger when you learned about the number zero. Not much bigger, just a little bigger. <coughs> then you got a little bit bigger. And if your teacher had taught you, okay, well, there's zero. When I was in first grade and we were doing, you know, three minus two, four minus two, four minus one, little things, little numbers. I wrote on my paper two minus three. And my teacher said, you can't do that. And I was the one who was like, well, why not? Why can't I do that? Because it makes sense to me if two minus three or three minus two is one, then two minus three is one. And then the, my teacher in first grade explained, well, on the other side of zero, if you only have two and you go back three, you go past zero and you have a negative number. And she blew my mind at five years old because I did not realize that there was anything less than zero at five years old. And so then I knew, at least then I understood, that's why I couldn't do two minus three. That's why you had to do three minus two when you were in first grade because they don't know about negatives. We learned about negatives when you got into sixth grade. So you got a little bit bigger. And that's when we learned that there was numbers on the other side of the number line. But did you forget about all those numbers you learned when you were little? Yes. You forgot about one, two, three, four? Actually, yeah, I did. Until I think so it keeps going. We don't forget what we learned when we were little. We still use one, two, three. These are integers. You learned these last year. Integers. Those are the negative numbers, but no decimals. Now that you are in seventh grade, we are going to fill in those gaps between all those integers. We've introduced numbers that go between all these numbers now. So now that you're bigger, now we know that there are things called 1 half. You're going to have negative 1 half, 2.4, negative 3 and a half. So we have fractions, we have decimals, they can be positive, they can be negative. 
but we didn't forget everything we learned when we were little. These are rational numbers. <laughs> So when you were little, you counted naturally, one, two, three, then you got a little bigger, and you learned about the number zero, and what it means to have nothing. And then when you got a little bigger, somebody told you there were numbers on the other side of zero, and then you got a little bit bigger, and they were like, well, there's numbers in between those numbers that you didn't know about. And that's where we end our seventh grade education. Pre-AP goes into other numbers. They have to, today we talked about imaginary numbers because there are numbers that don't exist and they have to talk about irrational numbers, which, I mean, we could throw that up there. That's fine. Give you a little peek. So if this is our school, this is our fish, you grew up, you became a big fish, there's a whole other beast in the ocean that uh, we don't deal with in seventh grade. Um, in pre-IP, he was our jellyfish in our ocean. So over here, you can draw a jellyfish. Because there is a number that you know about. There is a number that you deal with that is not rational. This is irrational. I like to use a jellyfish for irrational because he doesn't have bones and that seems irrational. <laughs> there is one number that you know of that is not part of this family, and that's pi. And since pi has a little squiggly line, jellyfishes have little squiggly lines. Pi is irrational. We can't say this number is pi. It just goes on forever. We can get close to pi, but we can't pinpoint pi. It doesn't exist.